Today, we're going to talk about the books we read in June. We are. I'm Jessica. I'm Christina. And you are watching Game, Game of, of Tomes. Last month, I talked about how I read Descenders, Volume 1 through 3, mm -hmm. and so in June, I read Descender, Volumes 4 through 6, by Jeff Lumiere. Mm. So, Descender is a graphic novel that is set in outer space. You have alien species and AI and humans that all live together, and you follow mostly this little boy, Tim21, he's a robot, who awakens after 10 years uh, to learn that the majority of the planets have been annihilated by these giant robots that just came and wiped people out and they don't know why. So a lot of the blame for that has been put on robots who are now being scrapped basically. So he's learning how to survive in this world and then you have a couple of people who are after him and you just follow that kind of storyline. And it was really really good. Yeah. I gave them all five stars and I love this series so much. It took me like a while to actually finish the last one just because I read four and five pretty quickly mm -hmm. and then when I got to the last one I was just kind of like burnt myself out a little bit I think mm -hmm. so I actually kind of just recently finished it but I really like the series. I love the storyline. I love the characters. I love the artwork and I love that it's like complete. Yeah. And now Ascenders is next. Mm -hmm. Which come out this year? I think. But I think I'd rather wait until it's like more of a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I DNF some books <laughs> this month. It was so hard to get into something and I was so yeah. busy and then when I like take a break from reading and then I come back, sometimes I don't come back still in it, you know? Yeah. And so uh, the books that I was reading at the beginning of this month I just couldn't get through because I just my interest was gone, and I don't know, whatever. Um, th for The Terror, though, by Dan Simmons, oh, yeah. I was listening to that. I was really enjoying the narration because it's narrated by John Lee, who is my favorite narrator. Uh, and the book um, takes place in the 1800s in Antarctica. Right? Antarctica. No, the Arctic. The, Ar the North Pole. Yeah. You Antarctica is the South making, Pole. They were trying to make the... Yes. They're trying to make the Arctic Pass. Well, I was listening to that in my car with the windows down and shorts, and I was like, man, this would be so much better in the wintertime. Yeah. So I just decided to put it down um, until that time because I am enjoying it. And I want to see the, there's like a BBC television series. Um, so I want to watch that. It's on Hulu. Mm. Cool. Mm -hmm. And it looks really good. And some people I like are in it, so. Cool. Yeah. So the other book that you DNF'd, I actually finished. Yes, and I'm so glad that you did. Yeah. I almost, I did put it down for a while, mm -hmm. but then I was like, no, I want to pick it back up. I need to finish it. And I did, and I'm really, really glad that I did. Good. Talk about it. That is Animal Control by Travis Howe. He sent us copies for a review. Yeah. And we were reading it last month as well. Mm -hmm. And I was like on the fence about it because the beginning is okay and... So he actually describes this as Zootopia meets Avengers, and I think that's like pretty spot on. Yeah. I mean, it's his own book, but still, it's pretty spot on. You follow this little apprenticed rabbit named Jack and his adventure to figure out, like, he wants to be on this team of superheroes as an apprentice, and so you kind of follow his adventures and you meet other fellow animals of all different kinds, and it's just... There's, like, a secret going on. They kind of have to save the world. So it's, like, really cute middle grade story. And I ended up giving it four stars. I really enjoyed it. There was um, some of the writing sometimes for me was, like, a little too descriptive about landscapes. Oh. And I was, like, let's I don't. I didn't get to that part. It reminded me of, like, Lainey Taylor's writing, where she can be a little flowery sometimes. Wow. And so I was just, like, other, but I mean, like, it was fine. Mm -hmm. That wasn't like a big deal to me and I could look past that. Okay, my problem with the writing style is that I had to, I felt like I had to pay close attention to each sentence. Yeah. Like the things weren't worded in a way that I felt were natural. Yeah. 
I can understand that. And mm -hmm. there were some parts of it where I was like, is this first person or is it third person? Because some of it to me oh, yeah. felt like third person, but then some of it felt like first person. And so I was a little thrown off sometimes. Like, oh, I see. Like threw me off. And so it like took me a little bit to get used to the writing style. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not like, it's not my favorite writing style, but it's not like my least favorite. I think that would probably be like the one thing that kept me from giving it like a five star rating. But I can't like pinpoint specific things about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. That like right. held me back from giving it five stars. It was just, people have different styles of writing and some I enjoy and some I don't so much. Mm -hmm. But it's a, you know, it was fine. Yeah. But I ended up uh, really enjoying it and it was, they had some twists and turns at the end yeah. that I was not expecting. Wow. And I was like, oh. Okay, mm. Cause I was nervous to pick it back up after I sat it down for like a week or so because I had like a lot of stuff going on and I was like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to like get into it. But when I started reading it again, I was really able to like really get back into it mm -hmm. and things really picked up and it was, it was really good. Um, and they each have like different special superhero powers and I thought that was really cool too. They were like unique, like one could stop time and... Oh yeah, that was the coolest part yeah. for sure. Like yeah. the different. Um, there was in the very beginning. There's a a kid who can turn himself into water. Yeah. And that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And like follow people around like as a puddle. Yeah. And uh, it describes like him being stepped in and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I thought it was really cute. It is really really cute. Really. I think if you gave it another chance, you would probably enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Just more when you're like in the mood and the mindset and didn't have as much going on or whatever. Yeah. But cool. I I genuinely did enjoy it. Awesome. That makes me happy. Do you want to talk about a book you finished? Okay. <laughs> well, in order to talk about a book that I finished, I have to talk about a book that I didn't finish. Okay. Um, so I have here Songs of Love and Death, um, which is a short story anthology. Mm -hmm. We had a question about that. It's both. Oh, 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 yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I, we thought maybe it's a short story or it's an anthology, but no, it's a short story anthology. Because there are different authors. Okay, it's short stories collection. can be by the same author or whatever. Anthologies is short story collections it's, by multiple authors. It could be an essay anthology as well. Okay. Um, so there are anthologies of different kinds. Okay. But it's just like a collection of works by different people. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm following you. Okay. Okay. Um, and each story has a... Like the whole theme of the book is um, star-crossed love. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first one is by a gentleman named Jim Butcher, and each each person gets their own, like, short bio in the beginning, and mm -hmm. it talked about the Harry Dresden files and how this, the first one was um, in that same series or world, and I enjoyed it so much that I decided to pick up his the first of that series. I've heard of that series, but and I've heard good things about it, but I I've never read it. Okay, so it's like a Law and Order SVU mm -hmm. in Chicago, but they hire a wizard to help them solve crimes. That sounds really cool. It is really cool. And anytime there's like, uh, because the whole world, it's like in a world where um, hu like non-magical folk and um, people who have magic and other mystical creatures like vampires, etc., mm -hmm. elves, Trolls, all that stuff, they all live in the same um, world. And so when there's like a magical mystery, they call on Harry Dresden. Okay, so you read that. So I read the first book called Stormfront. Um, it's the first in the Harry Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun. I, uh, this couple's hearts exploded while they were having intercourse. So, like I said, Law and Order SVU, Special Victims Unit. Yeah. It's, um, mm -hmm. the crimes are grisly. Yeah. A little bit. Um, and they're like, ooh, Magic did this. We should call private investigator Harry Dresden. So it's, like, definitely adult. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, and so he, <clears throat> he goes and tries to solve that murder, but at the same time, the Wizards Council is like, 
you're the only person who could have done this, and it's like against the law for wizards to kill people using magic. Right. And so now it's like double important that he figures out who did it because he's going to get executed by the wizards council if he doesn't. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was a lot of fun. I didn't like... Did he do it? No. No, he's a good guy. Why would you tell me that? Well, you just asked! <laughs> I thought you'd be like, that's a spoiler. <laughs> Sorry. I assumed he did not do it. No, that. you know in the beginning that he did. Yeah, that I mean, he's obviously. he's looking at the, the murder scene for the first time. <laughs> okay. It's not a spoiler. Goodness. Mm. Sorry. Anyway, what did you end up reading? I gave it three and okay. a half. I do plan on continuing the series, and I've heard that it gets better. Like, it wasn't like, um, I don't know, it was, it was Good. It was written in the 90s, and there was, like, um, it showed its age a bit. Yeah. Um, with, you know, some things that were a bit misogynistic that we would not say now. Yeah. And, uh, which is fine, you know. I, I, I could recognize those. Um, yeah. But this, the story, by the time I got to the end, I was ready for it to be done. Yeah. Um, like, I'm not, like, super into mystery crime. I like it, and um, I'll watch, like, an episode of TV or something if I'm really into a show. Like, I loved Law & Order SVU, yeah. which is why I wanted to get into this um, weird story with wiz wizards. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm, I will continue because I've heard it gets even better, um, which is great. And I really like the short story um, in this, and I'll just be picking at this whenever I feel like... Um, I'm thinking next month I might start really reading it. And Are who you, knows, I might find some more series that I want to read because yeah, of it. Yeah, that's true. Are you going through, like, um, each story by how it's in there, or are you picking out just, like... No, yeah, just going in order. And just... Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I finished Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this book follows Daisy Jones and a band called The Six, and it's an interview style looking back on why they broke up and like kind of their rise to fame, how they got together, and just their life in that time period, basically. And it was set in the 70s, mm -hmm. the majority of it. Mm -hmm. um, so you're kind of just listening to the band members reminisce on that time period in their life. And listening I, because you listened to an Audible. I did listen it's to an cast. Audible. Full cast. Awesome. Highly recommended. It. it was mm -hmm. great. Same. I was super, super into this. I was loving it. I was telling Jessica I was loving it. And then the end kind of like, it just fell just a little short mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. Um, for spoiler reasons that I'm not obviously going to talk about. Um, I love the writing style and I love the characters. We have read Evelyn Hugo, the... What, The Seven Husbands? Yes, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was a lot more in-depth as far Into as like the, the character. characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this one, I felt like there were a lot more characters. Yes. Right. And some of them, it was like a little difficult to keep straight at first because there are so many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but, it, you know, you get used to it and... Some of them don't talk as much as the others do, so it was pretty good. Um, I really like this direction that her books are going in. You know, it's the whole... Uh, um, this book has a similar vibe to Seven Husbands. Yeah. And I would read any future book that she does in this sort of style. I, I would as well, and I love... Uh, see, and Evelyn Hugo, it was also interview style. Oh, yeah. And so I enjoyed that a lot. We listened to that on Audible as mm -hmm. well, and that was, it was really great. great. Um... But that's one thing that I didn't really care for is some similarities that I could draw to Evelyn Hugo. Oh, that's what I did like. That's what I did not like. Okay. I was talking about, like, just the fact that it's historical fiction that goes into someone's famous life. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then no, I do like real that stuff. Oh, you're right. I didn't think about that because Evelyn Hugo was a big actress and this was a band. Yeah. You're right. I didn't think about that. I was just drawing more so, like, plot-wise. Gotcha. I didn't care for that. Yeah. I um, understand. Because it was so similar and I yeah. was like, mm-hmm. Mm and it was a lot less dramatic. It was. Yeah. I felt like it was um, not needed. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think you could put that in there. Okay. Um, probably. I still loved it, though. I still gave it four stars, mm -hmm. and I still would definitely recommend it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I read Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Um, I actually ended up 
buddy reading this with um, Julie from A Girl and a Book. Oh, cool. She saw that I was reading on Instagram and she was like, oh, I'm reading that too right now. I saw a couple other people were reading it on Instagram at the same time. And really? I was like, whoa, that's so weird. It is weird. Uh, so I was like, hey, you want to box about it? And yeah. so we got together and we read it and talked about it. Um, so that was really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I think if you really like Arya Stark's storyline in A Game of Thrones that you would really like this. Okay, so like um, a highborn raven-haired girl is father is executed for treason and then she's on her own learns the sword and then goes to this death church is this game of thrones uh-huh right yeah and so i couldn't help but draw all these comparisons to game of thrones and then to harry potter uh for the first half of the book and it was kind of taking me out of the story a little bit but once it got through the halfway mark that stopped for me and it became its own thing it was its own thing, but, like, I couldn't help but, like, every time something happened, I'd be like, oh, that was just like that. Right. Um, you couldn't get it out of your head. Right. Right. Uh, but that, that dissipated. The writing style is weird and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once I did, I came to really love it. And Jay Kristoff is so sassy mm -hmm. and so witty and the twists were like so realistic and cool and it was action 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 at the end and I just I'm so excited for you to finish it I'm currently reading it and I loved it I loved it so much I'm excited for God's Grave um, and then the, the final book in the trilogy is about to come out later this year and I think in September oh, cool. is when it comes out so yeah love it uh, there's a um, a few very explicit sex scenes in it, so just so you know. It's a little gruesome, too. Lots of murder and gore. And it does, it does talk about, like, smells and, I mean, but it says that straight up in the front of the book, and it's like, oh, a yes. lot of poets glaze over the fact that people empty their bowels when they die. This is not one of those books. <laughs> and I was like, Straight no. up. <laughs> and Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go. So, this was our book club pick for our In Real Life book club. Yes. I didn't finish it, obviously, but I am currently reading it. Um, one of our friends, Megan, from Tome Infinity, had said that people, for some reason, think that this is a young adult book. Mm. And that Jay Kristoff has repeatedly said, it is not, it is adult, it is clearly and they keep adult. putting it in the young adult section because yeah. he's written young adult. Right. But then when I immediately open the book and it says, uh, this is very descriptive on <laughs> blah, 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 yeah. you know? And I was like, of course this is adult. Like who thinks this is young adult? Like mm -hmm. as soon as I saw that, I was like, I'm in, I'm ready. Yeah. Like, but and I, there's a lot of cursing too, which you oh, wouldn't yeah, see yeah. in young adult. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love that it was, a, and I think also like the, the main character is a teenager, a young teenager, mm -hmm. and so I think that's why um, people put yeah. it in that section. She's well. You followed the two different timelines. You kind of have like her growing up, yeah, right, and then you have and like her at the murder church, her right, and she's like sixteen ish yes. at that age, mm -hmm. and like she's like ten at the youngest, right? When she's like growing up when her dad gets hung. Uh, the writing style, I started it and then. I was like very sporadic on reading it and I was like not even two chapters into it so I restarted it um, just yesterday actually and read like 20% of it <laughs> yesterday but it really took me a while to get used to the writing style mm -hmm. and there's a lot of footnotes mm -hmm. a lot of really funny sassy footnotes so we do not recommend the audio oh uh-huh my sister tried to start the audio she said she was so confused um, that she just couldn't. But, I mean, with the different timelines, time they don't... The On the page, it differentiates between the two timelines using italicized and non-italicized mm -hmm. words. Yeah. And they don't differentiate between those on the audiobook. And so, some people are having a hard time... Yeah, plus with I the footnotes. I, I mean, just be aware of that. Yeah. If that is, like, something that... I really did enjoy yeah. the footnotes, though. I did, too. Yeah. And I thought, like, at first, there were, like... They're quite often. Yeah. And, like, way more than I've ever seen in a book. And at first I was like, Ugh. but then, like, when you click on them, some of them are actually, like, really funny. And mm -hmm. I'm like, 
I think it's cool. Like you can really see his sense of humor, mm -hmm. and it's just yeah. I'm really so really on your it. Kindle. You don't go to the bottom. You like click on it. No, and it, it has up. yeah. It has like an asterisk or something, mm -hmm. and I click it, and it'll pop up a window that says that's what it is. cool. And then I can close it out. It's kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> Except sometimes my finger won't. My Kindle doesn't recognize that I'm trying to click it, so it just keeps turning the page. Uh, yeah. And then I have to like, no, what is this? <laughs> But I actually really like that feature. I have a Kindle Paperwhite. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it a lot. Cool. Uh, that's all I read. Well, I have one more, and it's very anticlimactic compared to that. Okay. So I listened to The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson mm -hmm. in like two oh. days or something because yeah. Short. I've been wanting a spooky book because I keep thinking about when we listened to The Winter People on mm -hmm. audio, and mm -hmm. I loved it. So I watched the TV show Haunting of Hill House on Netflix and I loved it and I thought I'll listen to the audio. I, okay, so in the book this follows a scientist who gets a couple of people to help him go to Hill House and just to see what happens because it's haunted, it's got a lot of rumors around it. Um, and you just follow that. In the TV show, it's a family. In the book, none of these people are related. And so it threw me off. There is, there's two women who volunteer to go do this with him. And there's a scientist. And then there is one boy who is the family who owns the house. But it's like he will inherit it someday. Um, but the family said, yeah, you can go to this house and like, stay there for a week and do whatever you want, but, like, we require somebody of our family to be with you. And so it landed on this guy. And it was okay. I gave it three stars, but it was really, like, nothing really happened for a long time. Mm. And I think just because I loved the TV show so much, yeah, and I just had that in my head, and this was nothing like that, I think that really kind of hindered me from enjoying this. But it was, like, psychological and, like, in a slow burn kind of way because mm -hmm. I didn't realize it until, like, I was, like, an hour from finishing it. Yeah. It was, like, more psychological than I expected, but it didn't hit me until afterwards. And, like, so the end when everything kind of, like, came together was when I was, like, oh, okay, like, I get it. But I it would have probably been, like, a two-star rating before that. Mm. So it was, like... It reminded me a lot of We've Always Lived in the Castle yeah. by Shirley Jackson. Mm -hmm. When we read it, and we didn't really care for that. No. This was very much like that. Mm -hmm. It was like the same kind of like style and just kind of like things are happening, but like nothing's really happening, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it kind of just really wasn't my thing. So, um, the, but the TV show you love. I, I love I've the not TV seen, show. What's it, what do you watch it on? Netflix. Uh -huh. It's a Netflix original, I think. Oh pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it is, it is spooky. But I will say, like, because some people don't like the horror kind of ghost thing, I will say, stick, if, if, like, uh, everything means something, okay. it just, stick with it. Because uh -huh. it's, like, it's spooky, but when you find everything out, it's, like, just, so uh, good. it's um, so good. How much of it is there? Is it like it's one just season? one season? Okay. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if they're gonna come out with a second season. I don't think they will, but I started watching it when it was really big. I think last year it came out, mm -hmm. and I was seeing a lot I of do things about people it. Talking about it, yeah, yeah, and it was just like each episode. There's like, at first, it's just kind of like one of those classic scary, like weird houses. It's haunted, but then you find out like there are so many connections and different things that it's. It's way more psychological than it is, like, it's got some jump scares in it, but, like, mm -hmm. not very much, and it's, like, you know. Okay. It's a really good show. Cool. I liked it a lot. Great. The book, not so much. Yeah. Mm hmm I, And I think even if I did read the book before I had watched the show, I still don't think I would have enjoyed the book much more than what I did. Gotcha. Maybe Shirley Jackson just isn't for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, that's all, all I read. We read, yes, yes. for June. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for watching. When you play the game of tomes, you read or you die. Come be our friends. Social media links in the description below. And we hope you're reading a great book. Bye. Bye. Lost.
What felt like it all in a game Every man I've measured out to hurt me before I could ever feel safe